Let me just welcome you, brothers and sisters, wherever you are, again to this gospel preaching. The only place where Christ is worshipped, the only place where the preaching is only about Christ and Him crucified. Scripture reading will come from the book of First Psalms, chapter First Samuel, chapter eighteen, from verse one downwards, uh, whereby Brother Chikumbuto will read it. First Samuel. Chapter 18, verse 1, down to verse 30. And it came to pass when he had made an end of speaking unto Saul, that the soul of Jonathan was killed with the soul of David, and Jonathan loves him as his own soul. And so took to him that day, that day, and would let him go no more home to his father's house. Then Jonathan and David made a covenant because he loves him as his own soul. And Jonathan stripped himself to the law that was upon him, and gave it to David and his garments even to his sword and his bow, his bow and to his heel. And David went out with with swords sent him and behaved himself wisely. And his saw said him over the men of war, and he was accepted in the sight of all the people, and also in the sight of Saul's servants. And it came to pass, as they come, when David was returned from the slaughter of the Philistines, that the woman come out of all cities of Israel, singing and dancing to meet King Saul with the tablets, with joy, and with the instruments of music. And the woman answered one another as they prayed, and he said, So has, has thrown Slani, his thousands, and David, his ten thousands, and the soul was very worth, and the saying displeased him, and he said, They have ascribed unto David ten thousands, and to, the, to me they have ascribed but thousands. And what can he, he have more but the king, but the kingdom? And so he David from the day and forward. And it comes to pass only the more that the evil spirits from the God come upon so. And he prophesied in the midst of the house, and David prayed with his hand as at the other time, and there was a javelin in Saul's hand. And Saul cast the javelin for the uh, for he said, I will smite David even to the war with, with it, and David avoided out of his presence twice. And Saul was afraid of David because the Lord was with him and was departed from Saul. Therefore, Saul removed him from, from him and made him his captain over a, over a thousand. 
and he went out and come in before the people. The David behaved himself wisely in all his way, and the Lord was with him. Therefore, when he saw, saw that uh, he behaved himself so wisely ahead of him, and Judah loves David, because he went out and come in before them. And the soul said to David, Behold, my elder daughter, Merab, how will I give thee to wife? Only be thou valiant for me, and fight the Lord's battle, for so said. Let not my hands be upon him, but let the hands of three stands be upon him. And David said unto Saul, Who am I, and what is my life, or my father's family in Israel, that I should be son in law? the king. But it comes to pass and, uh, at the time when Merab, Saul's daughter, should have been given to David, that she was given unto a zero, the Mehola, Mehola side of wife, and Masha Saul's daughter loves David, and they told so, and he, and the things pleased him. And so said, I will give him her, that she may be a snare of him, and that the hands of Christine may be against him. Therefore, so said to David, Go shut this day being my son in law, the one of the tr- of Tran. And so commanded his servants, saying, Come with the deputy's secret and say, Behold, the king hath delight in thee, and all his servants loved thee. Now, therefore, be the king's son-in-law. And the so servant spake those words in the ears of David. And David says, Seem it to you, a sight thing to be a king's son in law, seeing that I am a poor man and in a lightly esteemed, and the servants of Saul told him, saying, On this man has David, and Saul so said, Thus shall ye say to David, and the king desireth. Not any door, but an a hundred for for skins of the three stand to be invited in of the king's enemy. But he so thought to make David for by the hands of the three stands. And when these servants told David this way, he praised David well to be the king's son in law, and the days were not expired. Wherefore, David and went, he and his men, and swear 
of the Philistines, 200 men, and David brought their four skins, and they gave them in full tell to the king. That might be the king's sons in law, and so gave him Mesha, his daughter, to wife. And so, so, and knew that the Lord was with David, and that Mesha, Saul's daughter, loves him. And so was yet the more afraid of David. And so becomes David's enemy continually. Then the prince of the Philistines went forth, and it comes to pass after they went forth that David behaved himself more wisely than all the servants of Saul, so that they Name was much said by glory and honor because of this beautiful time of scripture reading. Let's open our hymns, hymn number 83, which speaks about the greatness of God. Gentit Sagulani Mabuka Twanimbo, Nimbo number 83. Imene igulankula za ukuru wa murungu. Nyimbo nambala 83. Nyimbo number 83 is in English. Speaks about the greatness of God, how great thou art. 83. Oh Lord my God. We consider all the way thy hand hath made. I see this dark, I hear the mighty thy heart, thy path is great. And sings my soul, my Savior, go. How Since my soul, I say, I go to thee. 
How great thou art, how great thou art, Let's go to the second scripture reading whereby Brother Austin Banda from Kasungu who read it from the book of Philippians chapter 3 verses 1 down to 21, the last verse. And then after Brother Kobe Mbewe who lead a song of praise to the Lord. Brother Austin, Philippians chapter 3. Chitegule bukula afiripi chapter 3 verse 31. Chotsa lila apale anga kondwelani mwambuye. Ulembela zomwezo kwa inu siku ndivuda ine. Koma kwa inu kuli kukazikita betu. Penyelani agalu. Penyelani ochita zoipa. Penyelani Chodulidwa, 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 chodulidwa. Best three. Pakuti ife, nifendu ndulidwe. Akutumikila popembeza ndinzimu wa murungu. Nazita mandira mwaesu wa kuruvira mtupi. Four. Dinga kare ineso ndiri nako waja krisitu. Kwa matu zenise niso, ndiesa zose. Zikaleji taiko chifugwa chama pambani duwe aji zindigiriso cha kristu yesu ambuye wanga. Wajai chifugwa cha yeyu, dine taiki sa zintu zose. Ndipo, dine zie sa zapazala kuti, ndika zonje zere kristu. Nine. Ndiku peze edwa mwa iye, wosa dewa kukala na aji chirunga mocha anga jamu la mulo, kwa machimene cha mwa chikulubilo cha pa kristu. Chirunga mojo mchojo gira kwa murungu ndichi kurupidilo. Kutindi mzindi gire iye. Ni mpambu ya kuka kwa ache. Nichi anjano cha soa wa zache. Mofani zido ndi ifa ya ache. Ngati mko teka ndika sigire kuka kwa ufa. Siku nena kuti ndina na ndilakale. Kavena kuti nda takukonzeka wa mpumpu. Mboma ndilo nde sangatiso ndika chipile ichijimene. Anandi, anandi gilira yeso krisi tu. Abale, ine sindiwe rengira nde kakuti nda kuchigwira kumashitu chimozi ndijijita. Kwa hii waladi zambuyo. Ndi kutambali tila oh. zamso za kolo. Ndi ronde sapo leke zela kusadila mfuko wa maita nidu haku mwamba amurungu mwa krisi yesu. Tose, tosefe Amele tono, tida konzeka apumfu, tilingalile iji muntima. Ndipo ngalikuli kantu, muli ngalile nako, kuina muntima aganso, murungu ata kupumburu silani inu. Jokaji, kumene tida fikilako, maendele watu alinge, alinganeko. Seventy. Abale. Kala ni pamozi akusata anga. Ndipo ya nganilani iwo akuyenda kotero monga muli ndi ife kisazo janu. I ama enda za amene ndiku uzani gawiri gawiri. Ndipo soba noso ndiku uzani ndiku lira. Ali adani amtanda wa kristitu. 19. Kisitu zo chao ndi chocho. Because of the beautiful time of reading the words. Brother John. 
Lead us with a song of praise to the Lord. Hymn number 59. Hymn number 59. <laughs> and start preaching. Brother Mark. Behold, the house is in waiting to hear from the Lord. Let's take our Bibles and look together the Gospel according to John chapter 1. And my text today is from verse 30 down to verse 39. 
Jen Chaguleni ma Bible watu wao kujogela mubuku la kutenga wabu ina wale khane mtu wao yamba old me yake ya 30 kuelekeza 39 Yohane chapter 1 I want to speak with you about Christ the eternal son of God Ni bo mtu wanga ni mene ni kandi kwa ilangula ndiye kuti Kristu mwana wa Mungu here in John chapter 1 and verse 30, this is the third time that John has declared that Christ is preferred before me. Up in verse 29 that we looked at last time, when he saw the Lord Jesus coming unto him, he said, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. They were seeing a man approaching them, coming unto them, but as John pointed the sinners to him, he did not point them to a mere man, one who was the Lamb of God, the one that God had purposed should sacrifice his life for the sin of his people. <laughs> And so not just some ordinary man who walked this earth as a prophet of God or as a teacher. Yes, the Lord Jesus Christ came into this world as a man. But what we see John declaring here in verse 30, he said, This is he of whom I said, After me cometh a man which is preferred before me, for he was before me. Yeyotu yukane po mfuro kuzira yesu kumuonesi. Adamu uzakuti anga kare ni nabwela oya mbirira. Koma yeyo ndiye obwela mbuyo manga oposa ine. This is the same thing that he declared back in verse 15, where it says, John bear witness of him and cried saying, This was he of whom I spake, he that cometh after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. And again in verse 27, he it is who coming after me is preferred before me, whose shoes latch it I am not worthy to unloose. What John is doing, John the Baptist, through John the Apostle, declaring that the Lord Jesus Christ is from eternity, and therefore none less than God himself. And when we get to it in verse 34, 
He's saying, and I saw and bear record that this is the Son of God. And so, in verse 31, when John the Baptist declares, and I knew him not, it was in this sense that it was just now that the Lord Jesus Christ would be revealed unto John, even though he was born after John by about six months, and Mary and Elizabeth were related, yet it was just now that his eyes would be open to see that this one that he doubtless had grown up with from a child all the way to this time was none other than the Son of God. <laughs> And so here in John chapter 1 and verse 31, he declares why it is that the Lord was manifest at this particular time. He says it was to make him manifest, he made manifest to Israel, to the nation of Israel. It was to the nation of Israel that the law and the prophecies and the promises were first given from, from old time. It was this one that the scriptures had foretold should come as the Messiah. That word means the anointed one of God. Even though the scriptures declared that he should come, Yet it wasn't until this time that he would be fully manifest unto that nation. And so John, as we've seen already, was to be the forerunner, the one who was to go before, like a messenger that sounds the trumpet before the king. Now John is declaring, this is that one who should come. And the way that the people were to identify with this one whom God said should come, none other than God himself in the flesh, was that they should be baptized with water to identify with that one who should come. And so that word baptism means immersion. So when we read it, that's what he's saying, that in verse 31, he should be made manifest to Israel. Therefore, am I come immersing with water? In Mark chapter 1 and verses 4 and 5, we read, John did baptize or immerse in the wilderness and preach the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. 
mukula maliko mutu wani ndi maka folo ni faifi ikula nkula za kutichori nga chobwelela yeyo mkukala likila utenga wakuloza kujikulu kilo chama chimo. This is the way that he was to prepare the way of the Lord, as it says in verse 3, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. It's very clear from that verse in Mark 1, 3, that when John was declaring Christ, he was preparing the way of the Lord. It was none other than the Lord, God in the flesh. And when it says in verse 4 that he preached the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins, he's not declaring that salvation is in the water. He's preaching the immersion in water that represents that repentance, that turning to God through the Lord Jesus Christ, in whom is the remission of sins. That's why he came, to put away the sin. And therefore, these by entering into the water and being immersed, we're looking forward to that one who would come, by whom is remission of sins, and in whom repentance is granted. Uh, and so Mark 1 5 tells us that there went out unto him all the land of Judea and they of Jerusalem and were all baptized of him in the river of Jordan, confessing their sins. So water baptism, water immersion, looks forward to the work of the Lord Jesus Christ, or as in our day, looks back to his work whereby he came and died and rose again for the remission of the sins of those to whom God has purposed to grant repentance. <laughs> So coming back to my text here in John 1 31, this is why John baptized in the Jordan River. The river represents death. So by being baptized in that Jordan River, those that the Lord drew to identify with him in that water baptism, what they were acknowledging was that death was their due. So 
bali infa imene Kristu ataloemo kuombola mitima yao so they were by identifying with the Lord Jesus in that water immersion they were acknowledging that it was on their behalf that he should come and lay down his life take that death penalty upon himself and that when he rose again they would rise with him and in him their sins would be put away you know but is it what mazi and watch up and i will forget that we could not go in there would you so christ to have them to be now for i give a man that now go for could it chimo langa machimo atu i just said we're going to a cool look in way this is the way according to scripture that those that the lord is pleased to draw to christ the crucified one are to identify with him in water immersion malemba wango na ngo tsimikizika kuti iwo wonse amene akurubira uthenga wabwino wachisomo uwo amene kila kubatizidwa ndo batizo wa madzi kukayimira kuti akuvomereza kuti kudayenera yesu wafera sadly today baptism has taken all kinds of forms and it's used primarily to promote men and to add numbers to their congregations it was not so from the beginning chonvetsa chisoni komaso chokhumudwitsa ncha kuti ubatizo panopa kuchitika mjira zosera siana koma ndicho ndinga chongofuna kuonjesera chiwerengero cha anthu pampingo many are being put in the water today who have never been taught of the lord jesus christ they're just following after men's ceremonies and traditions mene sujitikira pano simene mau amachitikira nkambo yothawiza mpuyozo chifukwa ambiri amapita kwa misi wa madzi asada phuzitsire ndambu yendo thenga wabwino this is why paul wrote the corinthians telling them that the lord did not send him forth to baptize that wasn't to be a measure of his success how many people he baptized but rather to preach christ and if the lord is pleased to do a work in the heart of a sinner then that sinner will desire to enter into the waters of baptism and be immersed identifying with christ in his death burial and resurrection it's not the water that washes away sin it's who the water represents in the lord jesus christ and his death where there is remission of sins sima zidu amene ali ofunikira kwambiri ai koma kodi madzi amaimira ndani ndipo cholinga chake chinali chali chipele chacho ndeye chicho ofunikira kwambiri if you take a sinner who's lost and has no knowledge of christ and you dunk him in the water when he comes out of the water all you have now is a wet lost blind and condemned sinner that water cannot make a change ngati mutenga munthu wochimwa nobira naye kumadzi ukamiza amene uthenga wabwino suda mveke kwa iyeyo khungu lake kulephera ndi kuchimwa kwake kumamtsutsabe koma amakhala opata chikumbuntima chifukwa sada phuzitsidwe ndambo ye and so moving on into verse 32 and 33 we read this statement and john bear record just like we see in verse 34 and i saw and bear record that's an important word chifakere kona ndimaka ndi 32 ndi 33 kuti ndipo yohane achita umboni 
zimene zikuone kilasu mdimi haka sede follow imena uri ndipo ndina ona ine ndipo ndina shita umbo it's the same thing as in verse 15 John bear witness of him pamene ndimi haka 15 na uri yeo kane ajitura umbo ni zaiye it's as if he were in a court of law standing before the judge and testifying the truth and nothing but the truth that's what that word means bear record everything's on record as to who Christ is and why he came and what he accomplished <laughs> Munthu amene ndi boni amafuna alankulecho ona ndi choka choka chimene adaona ndi kumva ndi kuchidziwa kuti uti yokane akamati auchitira umboni na uti auforokoza zona zeni zeni mbalola mirandu sokuza Yesu ndi kuona kwake nchilunga mochake and when he says in verse 32 and John bear record saying i saw the spirit descending from heaven like a dove and it abode upon him He's speaking there of where John the Baptist himself baptized, immersed the Lord Jesus Christ. We read more detail of this back in Matthew chapter 3, where in verse 13, it says, Then cometh Jesus from Galilee to Jordan unto John to be baptized or immersed of him. <laughs> And the Mayake, the thirteen, even every Pamenepo, yes, who are not joking about Galea, not the Guyoda, no Quayo Hane, would Sabbat is even the Now, if water baptism or immersion were for the washing away of sins, then there was no need for Christ to be baptized because he was sinless. Kugada Kabri Mazi, Amajot Shimo. So why was the Lord Jesus Christ himself immersed in the waters of baptism? It was for a testimony of his work that he came to accomplish in laying down his life, which represented by the immersion, but then rising again unto glory, his work being accomplished. So everything about that water baptism was a testimony to his death, his burial, and his resurrection. <laughs> It's the same testimony that those who are taught of the Lord by His Spirit testify by their water baptism. They don't look to the water for their salvation, but that it's who the the what the water represents, the Lord Jesus Christ in his death, his burial, and his resurrection for their salvation. But you can see how John the Baptist was hesitant because in verse 14 he says, John forbade him saying, I have need to be baptized of thee and comest thou to me? 
Nijifanyaje mkoza kuona na ntazolosa sama kwa nikuwe ni lauba Nkanyake siku jo chao chimo jifugwa Ndimayake ya 14 ni kuti ya Mateo chapter 3 Kwa mayohane anati amkanise na anena Ndiye ni la ine kubarisi siru andinu Ndipo inumuta kwa ine kodi And Jesus answering verse 15 of Matthew 3 Said unto him suffer it to be so Now for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he suffered him. Ndimaga 15, yukutimi kisira mbukula mateyu, nilakuti kwa mayesu, Adam nyanka nati kwa iye, balo la chobano, baudi kuye nela ife kukwa nilita, chilunga mochose motero, pamene po Adam lola iye. So how was Christ's immersion to be a fulfillment of all righteousness. It wasn't in the water, but it's what the water represented. It was necessary that John the Baptist immerse our Lord Jesus Christ as a testimony to his coming and his doing and his dying and rising again by which all righteousness would be fulfilled all that righteousness in his work Kuzafa ndi kuka kwa kufa kuni majima wantu ajo tsedwe. Uda alu mbo ni chabe umene ucha. And so today, any who are immersed in the water, it must be as a testimony that the work of Christ is all their righteousness, that his death is their death on their behalf, and his rising again on their behalf, thereby righteousness fulfilled for them. Ndijifuwa chache anga karema kono ano ubati zo mtu waka mabati zidwa anenegla upozitidwa kaya kutaka zidikile kutieyo au chitila umboni kuriyesu anenegla kufa kupajiki ndo kukiru wa manda ndi kukakwa kufa kuri manchimo anga ajo tsedwe ndipo ine ndine umboni kutikura ayenera kutero. And now in verses 16 and 17 we see the testimony of God himself upon his son and what that death represented. It says Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water and lo, the heavens were opened unto him and he saw the spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him and lo, a voice from heaven saying, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Ndieno, kuyambata na umboni wa antu, ojito umboni pa mbeo wa Jesu Christu. Pa mbeo wa 16 to 17, ndi murungu mwini kumamba au chitula so umboni, kutukuda ayenera ifayo iteke, kutichimo na mtu lijoke, chifo wa 16 na kuti, ndi kwa Yesu, pa mbeo anabati zidwa, omwepo anatulu ukamazi, Ndipo unani miamba ina mtsegukira iye. Ndipo anapenya mzimu wa mulungu wa kutsika. Ngari nkunda nuta nutela pa iye. Ndipo unani mau akujokira kumiamba akuti. Uyundie mwana wanga wakondedwa mwaye yu ndikondwela. That's why we have four gospels. Because in all four we see the full picture of how the Lord purpose that Christ should be exalted. And this is why coming back to my text in John chapter 1 and verse 32, he's referring to this, that he bear record saying, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it abode upon him. 
kufika bwela kubukula atula yohane 1 verse 32 imene kuti koma chifwa cha chaishi sorry ndipo yohane ane chitombo nuli nani ndinaona msimu ali kutsika kuchokera kumamba monga nkunda na kalabepa iye and in verse 33 this is the second time that john said and i knew him not in other words he knew of him but now with the testimony of the spirit it became all the more apparent that this is that one for whom was sent to be the forerunner and this was indeed with the approval now of god the father and god the spirit Kapena verse 33 ndinga chiwiri kapena yohane ana anena kuti sindi na mdziwa iye kuti ndauza kuti iye yomonga munthu sana mdziwe koma chifoda adaikwa mtsogolo obada oyapa kokozekeretsa kubwera kwake kwa Yesu ana elekera avumbuluke azindikirike amdziwe ndi cholinga chipele adabwera iye This was as much for John's benefit as for the people around him because everything i read here he's describing what he saw he saw the spirit descending like a dove and in verse 33 he admits i would not have known him had it not been for the spirit of god opening my eyes to see him ndifoya cha ijiji chimachiro bwino yohaneyo pamene anthu abayanga na yohaneyo chifukwa Yohane poyambira amankulu ndinaona 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 koma adaona kwanji pamene kuda kumena mulungu kutero chifamba 33 kuti ndipo sina mdziwa iye koma wondi rumayo kutsabati za ndimadzi iye anena ndine abene udzamuona nzimu akutsikira na akhala pa iye yemweyo ndiye wakubatiza ndi mzimo era and in verse 33 this is how john knew who it was that he was sent to baptize because it says he that sent me to baptize with water the same said unto me upon whom thou shalt see the spirit descending and remaining on him the same is he which baptizeth with the holy ghost yeyo amachitira umboni kuti ngakere sada mdziwe koma mzimo era adavumbulotsa ndikumuonetsa kuti iye amene nkunda idzatsika nkutela pa iye na amene yoyo amene adzabatiza ndi mzimo era this is a clear indication that christ as a man looked no different than other men on this earth he came to this earth and took on himself human flesh and yet the only way to know him for who he is in truth is by the spirit of god revealing him that's the only way we can know him inu kuti amulungu amuza yohane kuti amene mzimkunda idzatere pa iye na amene auta mdziyo kuti amene amabatizwa ndi mzimo era zikurandauza kuti yesu anabadwa adabadwa monga munthu ndipo adadibe chinthu chine chimene chimamsindikiritsa kuti uyu nde mpulumudzai adali wofanana ndi wina aliense koma mzimo era na amene adamthandiza kuti amuone mosiana ndi mene amaonekera mabadidwe ake umumu ndi mene feso tiliri yesu tikozo muona monga munthu wamba wofanana ndi wina aliense koma simatengera mzimo era ati tsegule maso kuti timsindikire yeyo monga promote there are many today that are going out in the world who have not been sent of god they've never been taught by the spirit of who Christ is and yet they go forth and they preach a Jesus that they know not it's just that they've been taught by men but i'll tell you that any that truly are servants of the living god who go forth and declare him it's because god by his spirit has revealed his son in them and therefore they declare him in all his glory even as john the baptist here anthu ambiri ama pita kokala dikira ndikumauza ndikuti ndatomedwa kokala dikira otenga obwino pamene sada phuzitsidwe kanthu maso awo sada tseguke malomake ama phuzitsa zeru za anthu zipena anthu adawa phuzitsa 
Government ma swa kwa tseku ka uruka la likre kristu wafa shiki ilo tau yomweo uza sindikira yesu eni weni wa malemba. That's why John the Baptist declared in verse 34, And I saw and bear record that this is the Son of God. That's who a true witness is, is one who has seen and heard with their own eyes. We're born into this world blind and deaf and dumb. It takes the Spirit of God to open our eyes and to hear the voice of Christ, to know Him. How do we know that we're the Lord's? How do we know that salvation is in Him? Well, that same Spirit that revealed Christ unto John the Baptist is that Spirit that reveals Him in the hearts of that people that the Lord Jesus came to save. That's how we know Him. I said originally we'd try to get to verse 39, but I believe we're going to stop here at verse 34. But let's consider in what we've read so far, according to John's testimony, the witness of the excellency and glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. What has been revealed? So what do we know of Christ according to the testimony of John? First of all, First of all, it's his pre-existence. When he came to this earth, that wasn't the beginning of his existence because John said in verse 15, he was before me. That's talking about from eternity. Secondly, we know that he is the Lord because in verse 23, John declares, I'm the voice of one crying in the wilderness, make straight the way of the Lord. That's the term used for God himself. That's who he was, God in the flesh. <laughs> And thirdly, John testified to his superiority, his preeminence in all things, because in verse 27, he declared that he wasn't even worthy to loose the shoes latchet. That was a job of a servant, and he's saying, I'm not even worthy to be a servant. That all pertains to the person of the Lord Jesus Christ, but right along with it, John testifies as to his sacrificial work. He didn't come to this earth just to give an example of what it is to be God in the flesh, but he took on the flesh in order to lay down his life as that sacrificial lamb. <laughs> Kudada inekira kukala mlo wa malo nduwa nsembe 
There are many people today that go about having made a profession of Christ based on what men have taught them, but never being taught by the Spirit have never understood that it is the very sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ in his death as the Lamb of God that is the salvation of the sinner. None have known Christ in truth except that the Spirit of God has revealed in them his work as that sacrificial lamb whereby they stand justified and sanctified and redeemed and glorified before God. It's all in his work. But then, fifthly, we see John testifying as to his divine sonship. In other words, as we read here in verse 34, and I saw and bear record that this is the Son of God. To be the Son of God is to be God himself, and it's in him that is salvation. What a glorious Christ he is, and if the Lord has been pleased to reveal him by his spirit in our mm. hearts, we rejoice. All of our glory mm. goes to him and him alone. Amen. Pali chimwe mwachajukuru, ndi kutuwa mkume na mungu kutuwa mbrute mwana wake maife, tawe omwe ya tizamu wana kutuye ya kandewa ya nila udemu, ndi matamando o kabas. We'll pause there, and Lord willing, next time pick up with verse 35. Again the next day, after John stood and two of his disciples, and looking upon Jesus as he walked, he said, Behold the Lamb of God. A simple message, and yet only the Spirit of God can reveal it in the hearts of those for whom Christ came to this earth. <laughs> I'll turn it back to you. To God be the glory out of this train number, and the, we'll finish with the hymn number 63. We'll start with 71 and end up. Zambu was doing it. number 71 in the body of Marisa, and Nimbo number 63. Now, I'm going to watch you so Chris to Amina to Bilawa in Opomore, as Yaga Rundua.
is I found. I found in him a resting praise, and he has made me cry. I hear the voice of Jesus say, Behold, I freely give the reaping water. The one stood down and drink and leave. I can do Jesus. My my soul is fine, and now I read in me. I hear the voice of Jesus say, I am this dark world blind. I know thy day be brought. In thy light, all oh, life I walk. It, it, it is a drum. Oh, 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 oh,
Precious Father, to you be all the glory and honor alone to your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. What a blessing, what a privilege for us to be able to hear your word that you gave to John by your spirit and today is preserved for us to hear and to know this record that this is indeed the Son of God. We would never believe were it not for that same spirit by which Christ was anointed should reveal him in our hearts. But oh, how we thank you that you were pleased not to leave us to ourselves, but to cause us to hear his voice, not audibly, but through the word and in our heart, and to know that indeed he is your lamb. He is that lamb that you have sent forth to fulfill all of the types and pictures and promises of the Old Testament sacrifice. And that in him, there is true satisfaction and that your people stand justified before you. Oh, what a glorious truth to be able to live by and in and know that all of our hope of salvation is in him. So I pray that you would bless your word to the hearts of your sheep, those for whom Christ came and paid the debt. And we're mindful to give you all the praise and glory in his precious name. Amen. <laughs> 